Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry as fuck, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the Mayhem Studios. And uh, of course, a video producer here in the area with International Wrestling Cartel, just coming off the great 15 year anniversary, as well as Renegade Wrestling Alliance and some other wrestling projects like something called Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table and uh and stuff uh also with me he's the voice of inspire pro wrestling down there in currently san antonio texas he is Eamon payton how you doing sir i'm doing fantastic as always so i'm always happy to uh be on here and talk indie wrestling with you every tuesday night so very excited Awesome, man. I'm excited to uh, get, uh, get to know tonight uh, one of uh, one of the guys from your neck of the woods from the looks of things, and uh, as, as we do here. But first, hey, please, please go check out this show and, and all the great interviews, 110 fantastic episodes and interviews uh, over at uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com for the Indie Mayhem Show. And, of course, the, re- the regular show, we talk about more of the mainstream wrestling, the midweek wars, talk about some individual uh, TV shows. We, we got the Raw wrap-up, a whole bunch of great stuff. And great columns over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can also drop us a line. Uh, uh, what do you have? What do you want to share about indie wrestling at Mayhem Show? Of course, on the Twitter, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, and the hotline 412-206-WMS0 or Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And, of course, we're here live every Tuesday night. Uh, should be around 11 p.m. Eastern time. Things, things switch around. Things switch around a little bit. Uh, but uh, you can join us and become part of the chat room as well as well as our uh, our chat mvp wheels usually isn't bobby fj towns in there as well this evening so amen who are we talking with tonight uh well like you said uh talking with someone from my neck of the woods this week this guy is definitely uh, a bit of an up-and-comer uh, across the state of texas uh he's uh making a lot of waves across the state uh and it's a guy who i've wanted to have on for a little while now and I'm very excited to get to talk to you here tonight uh ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the indie mayhem show mr johnny swole johnny how are you this evening i'm doing absolutely great couldn't ask for better i'm very honored to be a part of the show man i've been i've been keeping up with y'all's youtube videos and seeing who's been coming on the show so i'm really glad i got lined up and uh was able to make it on the show man thank you so much no, thank you. Absolutely, it's always it's always great to know that some people are watching. Uh, it's really cool. Um, I guess the <laughs> I, I guess the first thing we ask everybody is sort of an icebreaker question. Uh, since uh, we talk to a lot of people with indie wrestling, and they always get into it for one way, one reason or the other. Uh, so, uh, what's your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? Ah, uh, my first ever memory. Uh, mine's a little bit different uh, from a lot of people because I ended up getting into it. Uh, somewhat kind of late um i knew a lot of friends that completely grew up on it since they were you know five six or seven i ended up getting around um when i was probably 11 um but when i was i was about uh fifth grade i want to say um and my friends would always come to school and it was on a monday or you know the following tuesday or friday they would come to school and they would just be telling these outrageous stories of what they saw on tv and just like going on and on and on and on. And, you know, I always felt, you know, I kind of pictured what they were talking about, but it didn't completely make sense to me. And I kind of, you know, just got tired of like feeling left out. And I finally discovered what they were talking about. And it was the immense world of professional wrestling. And I, you know, kept asking them crazy questions and different, you know, how it worked and all that stuff and, you know, what channels it came on. And I was just having a really hard time uh, visualizing this. So I decided, you know, I'll wait till maybe a Friday or Monday, whichever came around first. Um, and I would try to watch it on TV. And um, it happened to be a same Friday. And this was back around uh, 2005 at the, I guess you want to say the peak of the Ruthless Aggression era. And um, I was flipping through channels and I uh, was just trying to look for it. And I had came across uh, UPN, which I think it was at the time, which is probably now CW. Um, and it was an episode of Friday Night SmackDown. And I um, 
I remember the match specifically too. I just had caught the main event. It was a steel cage match. It was Batista and Rey Mysterio versus uh, Eminem. And mm. after I had watched that, I had just been completely hooked to the world of pro wrestling. After that, I was hooked. Every weekend I followed it, Monday, Tuesday, and whenever it came on, even in the when they had Raw at AM that came on Saturday morning, even if it was just an hour, I was just hooked. And then that I always fit in with my friends afterwards and now I could come to school and have like conversations with them and just since then I've it's never left my heart or my mind. So that's that's how I found upon it. Awesome. And I think that's actually very interesting, uh, the time in which you got in, because usually uh, when we talk to people on the show, they're, they're, a lot of times they get in around like sort of the 80s during the Hogan era or it's uh, the IG era, obviously. But uh, it was cool. It's cool to know that people, you know, still got into that time where a lot of people consider it to be like the, I guess, the waning period for pro wrestling and the fact that it was kind of dying down a bit, but that that what was happening was still able to sort of catch your attention. Do you think it was, was there a certain thing about it? Was it just the athleticism? Was it just um, characters? Do you know if anything specifically was what kind of caught you? Um, let's see. I always did my research to see, you know, what happened all, all times before me, like the Attitude Era. Mm-hmm. And uh, just comparing the Attitude Era to where I got in, and, you know, I, when I saw this era, what I saw the most was uh, the, the enhanced physiques like the bodies on these people completely stood out to me and it just, they look like modern day or futuristic uh, comic book heroes. And I would always compare them to the guys back in the eighties and nineties. And there's, it, to me, it's, it's a huge, uh, huge difference. Um, the Russo aggression era, you see more bodybuilding type of guys. And that's what later on inspired me to, to get into that as well. And that's that's probably the the number one thing that really stuck out to me because I had never seen like these superb athletes look in such great condition and just all around great physiques and I had I'd never seen that before. So that's probably what really just stood out to most in me. Awesome. Uh, and to, uh, and to, uh, to transition from you know watching wrestling to getting into wrestling, uh, what was your story with that? I actually. I find it interesting because I know you're from Corpus Christi, which I'm actually originally from. Uh, so oh, nice. where, where was, uh, where would, did you got to get your start there or, or where would you find, I guess, the, the wrestling school and how did you find out that you could train to be a, a pro wrestler? Um, that's like, that's a really good question right there. Um, well, I first started out, um, I was 16 and at that point in my life, I had already, uh, said in my mind, I'm going to chase this. I'm going to go after it. I'm going to do whatever I can to make this possible, make this dream happen. So I originally had started my my weight training and my bodybuilding journey as well. Um, but I was also looking around areas and for places to train. There were a couple of schools down here uh, ran by uh, Ben Galvan. Um, and he, he, was, he ran um, Gulf Coast Wrestling Alliance. But at that time, they were out of business and they were – they weren't relevant, and I had ca- tried to uh, contacting him multiple times, and I had no success on there. So I wasn't able to train locally. So I uh, was doing more research around, and I had stumbled upon uh, Rudy Boyd Gonzalez's uh, wrestling school. And I had looked at the fees, and at that time, I just didn't have the money for it. Um, I also didn't have a vehicle at the time to travel. So, you know, I stayed patient, and I waited for something to finally open up. Um, during my senior year of high school, um, one of my buddies had moved back down to uh, McAllen, and he actually contacted me saying, "Hey, they got some uh, pro wrestling tryout uh, down here in McAllen. You wanna you wanna see if you can come down here or not?" So I immediately jumped on it, um, and I drove down to McAllen, and that's where I met um, the juicy one, Danny Ramones. And I got in contact with him, and he actually ended up being my trainer, and I ended up training with him. Uh, I met it with him, and uh, I agreed to drive down every single weekend uh, and train for about a year and a half. Um, and he's the one that really gave me my start and really like taught me so much to the business, in and outside psychology, 
basics, fundamentals, and all that great stuff. Um, and I really owe a lot of my uh, career to him because he's the one that really took me under his wing and just guided me and, you know, showed me and just gave me that initial start that, you know, that every every other expiring pro wrestler really needs. Awesome, definitely. Uh, was there anything uh, when it came to training to be a pro wrestler? Was it uh, as hard as you expected? Was there any things that kind of stuck out to you, like difficulties when it comes to training, uh, uh, things that kind of were, were interesting to you or that you didn't realize, I guess, when what it took to become a pro wrestler? Um, I had always uh, was very intimidated by it. I figured it would be extremely physical, but I didn't know exactly how physical it would be. So I actually stepped in that ring and got a feel for it. I actually have my first memory of the first ever back bump I ever took. And of course, like every every person that ever takes their first back bump, they don't they don't tuck their neck. So I ended up smacking my head on the mat a couple of times. And I remember just every time I'd hit my head, I'd look up. You face the ceiling and ask myself over and over again, am I really wanting to do this? Am I really going to be able to hang and, and get through this? <clears throat> Eventually time progressed and I, you know, properly learned how to do it and protect myself. But it was definitely not what I expected. Everything was completely physical. Even running the ropes even hurt. Like you, I'd come home with just like these marks on my back just from running the ropes, you know? And so... I really didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into, but I knew there was going to be a lot of pain and a lot of physical in this in it. And uh, there's nothing really in this world that can really prepare you for the punishment you'll take in that ring. You just kind of, it's either you you can take it or you can't. Like I remember that same night that I, the first time I went down there, I watched the guy take a front, do a front foot bump. And after that, he just rolled out and he, I can't do this. And he, he went home. So it's kind of like <clears throat> you don't know what to expect. You either can hang or you can't. Definitely. Uh, and and what year is it when you when you started? How long have you been uh, going at this now for? Um, I want to say I started my training somewhere uh, early 2014, and then uh, <clears throat> I made my debut in 2015. Oh, awesome! And, uh, and, yeah, so I'm I'm still I'm still new to the business and, and and still learning as well. But it definitely seems as though you're you're getting around a lot, especially if you're at Texas. So it's cool to see somebody uh, going around and getting you know big time matches and stuff like that. Uh, definitely really cool to see. Uh, I want to wow, talk a bit about so <laughs> no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to take a bit about uh, your character development because I've seen you many times and uh, uh, you you've in the past have been a man of many names. Um, uh, but it seems as though you you finally uh, uh, really embraced uh, what you are now, which is Johnny Swole. Um, how did that kind of come about? I guess in the way of sort of developing your character, your name, name as well, your persona. Uh, uh, how did you find that kind of aspect of the business? Oh man, <laughs> the the multiple names is, is kind of a funny story. Um, I originally started out with uh, with one name. And somehow, whenever I would go to certain shows, they'd get it mixed up or they mix it around and, you know, put the first name first and the last name, you know, in the first name spot. And then they, people were getting really confused. So I really needed to find something that would stand out and people would, would remember and there would be no confusion. <laughs> so I figured, you know, hey, I'm a bodybuilding type of guy. I hit the gym six times a week. I, I diet. I do personal training this is me, this is who I want to be, let me transfuse this into my wrestling character. And that's how the whole Johnny Swole thing came about. And I've been working under this gimmick for, I want to say, past five months or so. And this has probably worked better for me than any other idea I had before that. And it, and it sticks out to me. And anytime I go out there, I feel like, hey, I'm not having to pretend to be somebody because you know this is this is truly me so i'm probably going to stick with that probably till the end because it works for me and i don't want anyone else to get confused with different other names mm -hmm. so save people the task on the trouble definitely and and i think uh, you know a lot of people say that a lot about you know characters in wrestling is that you know to embrace aspects of what that person actually is and kind of uh 
bring it to life and, and uh, uh, I, I guess take it up times a times hundred, I guess you could say. Um, and, right. and I guess that's the case, like you mentioned with like your bodybuilding and stuff like that. Uh, uh, did you find that um, the stuff you kind of do in the ring or, or the character you kind of portray, uh, are, are there certain things that you found from bodybuilding that kind of relate towards wrestling? I guess you, I guess is the best way to put it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, for one is always the, the constant posing in the ring. I take uh, bodybuilding poses that are used to compete on stage and I just throw the same poses in the ring just to either get people to get behind me or to get to hate me, depending depending on what's going that night. Everyone everyone likes that or doesn't like that cocky guy. Um, also, I bring somewhat type of an, an athletic type that I have also adopted from that as well. Um, I did agility training for about uh, five months or so. So I use a couple stuff that I can get a lot of air off. I'm pretty sure you all seen it. I use the... Uh, a standing splash coming off the ropes and <laughs> a lot of people ask if I'm actually wearing Air Jordans under my boots. So <laughs> that's, that's a good compliment there. Um, I like to display a little bit of my athleticism. Um, I do consider myself somewhat of a big guy, but I'm not huge. So, you know, I like to do a little bit of flashy stuff that I learned when I was younger. Um, I also did, uh, <laughs> I did parkour back in the day when I was probably about, 15 so i still use somewhat of an influence from that as well awesome very cool um and, and as i mentioned before it seems like you're getting around texas a lot and getting to wrestle a lot of ta- really talented people i know you had a, a pretty big match with uh, carson recently in, in, in buda uh you've been uh, worked for inspire pro lately and you recently came off of a tag match with guys like davy vega and tim storm uh, is there anybody, I guess, kind of on your list as people, as far as people you kind of want to wrestle and get in the ring with? Is there anyone that you kind of maybe have on your bucket list? Oh, absolutely. And I, I would definitely have to mark Carson off on that list because before I even broke in, and I always heard nothing but good things about that guy. And I always told myself, hey, I want to wrestle that guy one day. So he was first on my list. Um, a couple guys that I'd like to to mark off that list would – Another one would be probably uh, Sammy Guevara. He's a he's a really great guy, and just watching him in the ring, and I just felt like, you know, two young kids going at it, you know, nothing but good could possibly come out of that. So he, he'd be another guy I would uh, possibly like to wrestle. Uh, another on my list, man, I, I know I had a list going somewhere, but I couldn't, I couldn't remember. Um, Scotty Santiago is another guy that I, I would like to step in the ring with as well. Um, just hearing about his start and like the experiences he's been throughout the world, uh, Puerto Rico and Mexico. Um, I feel like I could just learn so much from him just by stepping in the ring with him, even if it's for five, 10 or 15 minutes or so. So he, he's definitely um, on my list as well. <clears throat> Byron Wilcott would be probably be my last one just because the experience that he has to offer and just, I've shared a locker room with him a couple of times and just some of the knowledge he can just, you know, spread. It's just like you take home and you just learn so much. So I can only imagine what it would be like to step in the ring with him. So he would, he would definitely be on that list. Uh, I try to keep my list short, you know, <laughs> keep my goals reachable. Don't want to, don't want to set a list too big. No, definitely. But no, all, all those matches and, and guys definitely would be very cool. Um, going to some of the, uh, the regular questions we tend to ask everybody on the show, uh, I kind of want to pick your brain on these. Uh, what we normally like to ask the guys is, uh, what are you watching currently wrestling-wise? Uh, whether it's for uh, recreation or for studying purposes, is there anything wrestling-wise that you kind of have your eye on right now? Um. I try to study his tape as much as I possibly can. Um, a lot of stuff I've been watching is uh, there was a tournament back in the day. Um, I know CZW is known for a lot of its hardcore, ultra-violent stuff, um, but they really do have a lot of good international uh, tournaments that were, you know, that don't really have that whole hardcore style, and they would be called uh, best of the best tournaments, mm-hmm. and. Um, those they have multiple tournaments and those are just filled with the top any guys all over the world that come together for a night as well um and if you just go back and you watch those tapes you can see just watching the best guys in the absolute world you know 
And you can just literally learn so much from just watching 10 minutes of that. That's really good uh, study material, and I recommend it to um, a lot of people as well. Um, any uh, Ted Petty invitationals from uh, either way, Mid-South, are um, great studying tapes as well. I've actually been studying uh, all those tournaments since I was 17 um, <laughs> when I first started getting into independent wrestling. So. And I have a bunch of those, and I always, no matter you know how much pro wrestling evolves, I always refer back to those tapes. Those are uh, great things to study. Um, I'm actually a really big fan of Michael Elgin. Um, I watch a lot of his stuff just because you know he's a big guy, but he can also move. He can do some mm-hmm. great, really crazy stuff. And I've always been a big fan of huge guys that have these huge physiques that can still do athletic stuff, like uh, Brian Cage as well. That guy, that guy's pretty amazing, and I shared a locker room with him as well. And he's he's an overall great guy too, as well. Um, so just studying his stuff as well. <clears throat> awesome, very cool. Um, and and the final question we like to ask our guests, and and they take it in many different directions. So feel free. Uh, the question that we like to end it with is: uh, What is, in your opinion, the best thing about indie wrestling, and the worst thing about indie wrestling? Oh man. <laughs> That's a, that's another great question. Uh, dang. Uh, let's see. The best thing and the worst thing. I will also I'll have to go ahead and get the, the worst thing out of the way. So let's start the first thing. Um, the worst thing about professional wrestling is the whole trust barrier. You can't, there aren't a whole lot of people you can trust in this business. There are some people that will call you brother straight to your face that will shake your hand and then act completely opposite once your back is turned. And it sometimes it can affect your, your career. Um, that's what I would say uh, is probably the worst thing is you in a business like this, you, it's man, man and you can't really trust a whole lot of people. So that's the bad part. Um, the good part I like, as as much as everyone says they don't like to travel, I absolutely love travel. I love being for, on the road for hours on end, especially when you're rolling with a car full of guys and just having a blast, stopping at gas stations and just playing around and have, having a good old time. So I really enjoy the, the traveling aspect of it and just going to different towns and meeting different people. Um, I also uh, love networking at shows, uh, meeting new guys that eventually can help me get to other shows, different states. So that's probably my favorite thing about pro wrestling is networking and uh, traveling. Awesome. Very cool. Um, well, well, thank you very much, Johnny, for joining us and, and talking a bit of, uh, of your career and the stuff you've been doing. Uh, if listeners uh, want to check you out, uh, if you have any upcoming events or if uh, they can find you on social media, uh, Feel free to uh, plug away. Okay, awesome. Um, this weekend, I have a awesome three show set up. I have El Paso on Friday for New Era Wrestling. On Saturday, I actually make my main event pro wrestling in Mansfield, Louisiana. I will also be in Waco on Sunday for Heart of Texas Wrestling. Um, next week I will be in, uh, Tennessee, Dysburg for NWA Mid-South. Um, and then I'll have, uh, future events up for, to be announced. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, well, once again, thank you very much, Johnny, for, uh, stopping by and talking with us. It was great getting to chat with you and finally getting to have you on this show. So, uh, thank you. Thanks again. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and, uh, we'll be right back with some more Indie Mayhem, uh, Indie Wrestling discussion. I started as just a fan. Uh, I started a couple years back uh, as a fan, and then I started emailing the show. And then while I was emailing the show, uh, they had this little uh, orientation type situation where they actually asked people to be on the actual Mayhem show. So. And I think my first episode was uh, the Butterbean SJK confrontation. I'm not sure why I was on there, but it was a lot of fun to be on there. And we're back, Indie Mayhem Show. Eamon Payton, Mike Sorg here. 
talking pro wrestling. Thank uh, Johnny Swole. Hey, that, Johnny Swole seems like a swell dude. <laughs> <laughs> you could you could call him Johnny Swell. Johnny Swell. That could be his next gimmick. Uh, but no, it was awesome hearing hearing from him and hearing that hearing his stories. So. Uh, so, hey, you know, there was a, a, a pretty big event of this past week. And the first big core time show, since the other one got, got snowed out about a month ago, uh, IWC celebrating, or actually about two months ago now, I think about it. Um, IWC celebrating its 15 years, uh, 15th anniversary. Uh, and, I, I, and I think that's telling because I even I'm actually in the middle of still editing, unfortunately, uh, the seven year anniversary for the Renegade Wrestling Alliance for uh, Fury. Uh, back in February, and, uh, and and I got to thinking. Well, first it was a, it was a fun show. Yeah, a lot of a lot of great stuff. They kind of celebrated a bit of the past, present, and future. Colt Cabana made a return, um, taking on RJ City, who was also returning. Uh, so that was as entertaining as you could imagine for something like that. Um, it, and actually, I, I wanted to point out a tweet that I just saw actually while you were wrapping up your interview. From uh, 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 Timothy Harshman, the real Harshman on Twitter, who I, I believe listens to this show, and and, and I know we've I've run into it at a few shows as well. Um, he says, "So three days later, my son is still talking about meeting Colt Cabana in RJ City on on Saturday." Awesome. That's that's so great. Um, I love hearing stuff like that. But no stuff like that. Great match there. Jason Gorey returning to uh, IWC to take on Andrew Palace for the Super Indie title. Uh, you know, lots of friends of the show. Plus Chris LaRusso. By the way, side note, Chris LaRusso, um, friend of Indie Mayhem, Wrestling Mayhem, uh, uh, one of the guys to help the Mayhemies this year, uh, is actually, uh, he makes his television debut. Uh, if you haven't seen it this past weekend, check it out on Comet Wednesday um, with Ring of Honor, um, along mm-hmm. with Truth Martini. So so go check that out. See see him as part of that. Uh, but he was we here were, as we well. He was in the midweek war. <laughs> exactly. He had a great match with another friend of the show, Remy LeVay. Again, I thought it was a really nice mix of, you know, celebrating the past, celebrating the future. Um, uh, the main event in, in, in particular, uh, DJ Z, Zima Ion, Shima Zion, um, um, taking on uh, uh, Jimmy Nuts for the the, the, the IWC title. Um, Nuts is a guy that's that's really come into his own and, and unfortunately been plagued by injuries. And it looks like it's caught up to him again. I think it's his knee that that's the issue. Um, so he's going to be out for a bit. And 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 uh, of course, DJ Z, uh, a three-time IWC champion now, uh, due to the events of the show, and, uh, and and really great to see. I think he's it's a great representative again, a guy that's been on TNA and he's coming back and, and going to carry the belt for a while. Um, so uh, you know, I, I I think that was really cool to see that happen. You know, uh, unfortunate circumstances, but tremendous match. When afterwards, you know, he, uh, hearing that he's had this uh, knee injury since I think he said December, and he turned in the match he did with Zima, he turned in the match that he did with uh, Darren De Niro, uh two weeks ago. I, I, I Eamon, I, I, I don't know if you had this at Inspire, but I, you know, uh, just coming off of Roadblock, watching NXTs and stuff, like you ever watch a couple of guys in the ring and you're just like, why aren't these guys on my TV? You know, oh, all the time. Like I feel like, even though oh, I guess technically one of them is on the TV, but but still, like like why aren't these guys tearing up full sale or or whatever else, right? Um, and I and I think uh, Zima and, and Jimmy Nuts are definitely along those lines, and and and, and actually several people uh, at at IWC could could fit the bill, but those guys main eventing in that spot, uh, just just fantastic, fantastic stuff. Um, the other, as far as old school, uh, uh, they, there was a, and, and this is going to matter to anybody else, but uh, uh, Super Hentai and, and, and uh, uh, Dennis Gregory, the Gambinos and Sexual Harassment. Eamon, I know as a longtime listener to the podcast, you know these names. <laughs> 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 Most have been part of the show uh, in some aspect in the past. Uh, part of Wrestling Mayhem show, friends of the show, interviews, whatever the case may be. Had a three-way dance. Uh, I believe it was Eric Ecstasy's last match officially. Um, um, I think I think they said Mickey wasn't going to be around for a while either, if I remember from the end of the show. I don't know. I was behind production, so 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 maybe I don't remember everything. Uh, but it's all on digital download. We got over at IndieWrestling.us. Um, but the biggest thing from the night, and um, gee, I wish I had something handy here. But uh, 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 so Super Hentai goes off, and there's a big scissor lift that they have the spotlight on in there. He hijacks the scissor lift, drives it up to the ring. 
raises the scissor lift and jumps off of it. Jesus. <laughs> so there you go onto the 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 five other guys in the ring but it was pr- some pretty fantastic stuff they had a, it was the right mix now, now iwc's done like these retro reunions in the past right like these like i mean I, they have a history so it makes sense like let's bring in some people mix them with the new people and everything and and and, and they always to me um for whatever reason kind of fell flat as a reunion show right like mm-hmm. like these flashback sh- flashback shows. We're not going to get CM Punk. We're not going to get AJ Styles. We're not going to get Christopher Daniels or or um, uh, Delirious coming back. Right? Those guys are busy. Right? <laughs> For the most part. Right. But again, somebody like a Colt Cabana, pretty big deal. Um, and 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 a bunch of these other guys. Like it's the right mix of guys. Right? It's not going to be like half those guys that you're able to bring back. It has to be a night of the superstar show. <laughs> at this point uh or a night of legends show or something like that but uh but pretty fantastic they're able to pull this off and i thought you know again i i i talked to the hentai after his match and i said i said man that is like aside from the jumping off of uh of the damn scissor lift like that's the kind of match that as a fan got me hooked on this 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 place on iwc and that's 2006 so wow, I've seen a good chunk of the IWC now. That I'm thinking about it, uh, but <laughs> uh, that that that's interesting. But um, but no, I, it was a really fun show, and 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 I thought I, I thought I'd have a conversation with you here, Eamon, about longevity. Um, you have something like IWC. You have I know famously I believe Pro Wrestling Express um, that runs out of McKeesport. They've been around since sometime in the '90s, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. And you don't see that a lot, do you? You don't see any promotions that have that long haul. Uh, uh, what is Shakara up to? Season 16, is it? Uh, about 15 or 16. 15, yeah. 16. So they've been around for a bit. Of course, Ring of Honor getting getting there. And, and look how long it took them to get TV. And then TV of significance, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, and, 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 and even TNA has had a big question mark on it for the last couple of years. Um, by the way, I just discovered my travels over the next couple of, a couple of months are going to take me within spitting distance of uh, uh, TNA's home office in Nashville. So guys sent me uh, some suggestions on what to do about that. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> just going to put that out there. Um, but anyways, um, and, maybe, and maybe another wrestling promotion of note. Oh, I just realized. I need to check dates to see if PWG has a show a certain weekend. <laughs> Good luck at getting in. Yeah, I guess it's not even. Well, it's, I'll probably be working whenever they would have a show, anyways. But anyways. Well, I mean, I mean the fact that they sell out in like yeah, like yeah, thirty yeah. minutes sometimes. We got. We need to make some. We need to make some more 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 friends out in LA. Uh, uh, although Alex Cars, it'll be good to see Alex Cars. But anyways, but no, that longevity side of things. I mean, your guy Inspire is coming on what three or four years at this point too. Uh, we're almost gonna we're gonna hit three in July. So. Wow, wow, you guys, which is a cool feeling. Yeah, you guys have been on a fast track. Uh, uh, Lucha Underground for as much noise as this made is only in second season. Apparently, going to film, film a third here very very shortly. Um, I, I I don't know what what do you think it is that takes. What does it take for a promotion like this to stick around at this point? Um, I often say about when it when you know I, I I'm it, it, you're talking to the guy that's th- that's done ten years of a podcast in the Wrestling Mayhem mm-hmm. show, and I often I often say it's kind of like a little bit of a mild insanity at that point because it's not like you're making money at something like this, and I imagine it's not a terrible money maker when you're running an indie promotion either. Um, what what do you see uh, as as the qualities of the ones that are around for so long? Um, well, I think when you're talking about a promotion that's been around for like 10, 15, beyond that years, I think the thing that sticks out more than anything is uh, not, not the necessarily even the product that's being put forward, but sort of their base. And, and, and I think a lot of that falls on their base staff, you know, and, and having that kind of groundwork at, of that. Because at that point, you know, many people book shows, obviously, and many people you know, can put on wrestling events, but I think to build a company and build an organization that can last um, a decade or, or more than that, like that takes more than just, you know, flying in good wrestlers or using good wrestlers locally. It's, it's about building this really good base where you can, um, you know, have 
build build a promotion that will last a, a long time uh, is the goal. I, I think wrestling obviously is extremely important. I mean, without without it, you don't have a wrestling promotion, obviously. But I don't think you know quality is important. But to have that base um, uh, that knows what they're doing and knows their vision as well, I think is extremely important. Um, you know, companies like PWG have been going around uh, for, you know, about, about as long as Ring of Honor, I want to say. And, you know, they've not really expanded necessarily. They still run smallish indie shows, but they're content with that because they've built an audience and they've built a, a, a vibe and an environment. So it doesn't mean necessarily hitting like a point in the Ring of Honor where you get TV. It just means building a base and knowing what you're doing and doing it well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And having that, and, and 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 I don't know, like 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 uh, obviously the financial side of things, but just like there's forward motion, there's 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 something there. Um, I I mean I I think you can definitely look at something in an IWC or a Chikara and just look at the um quality over the years. Now, of course, IWC is 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 a company that's had three, I guess you could say technically four owners in its lifespan. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, 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 you know, and again, I think that's, you know, people that, you know, it could afford it. It, it, it seriously, I, I believe could afford it, um, not knowing any details, uh, 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 two times, you know, I, I don't know the details of, of, of handing over from, from, from Norm Connors to Chuck Roberts to Justin Plummer here. Um, but, but you know, very well, a, a, a suitor could not have stepped up and it was just something that went away. Mm-hmm. You know, like ECW had to go away, right? Uh, there were legal issues there, of course, of course right. and money and, and everything that went along with that aspect. But um, that somebody believes in it to carry it on, and 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 I believe we see, uh, you know, definitely now, like some elements of that feeling of why it was special, you know five years ago, 10 years ago, when people thought it was, when we had our CM Punk, when CM Punk and Cold Cabana were, were touring their, ma- their, their feud across the country, as they talk about in the CM Punk DVD, and they mentioned Pittsburgh, and that is on, uh, that, that is in IWC, and that is on the best of CM Punk DVD that we have, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, that, that kind of thing, I, I, I think that's, that's, that, that shows, that shows a pedigree there, right? And and, and you have guys like Eli, Elias Samson that came from here, GJ Zima Ion. I mean, it's still happening. It's still producing people to a certain uh, point. So yeah, definitely. But um, but yeah, there you go. I, I I'm curious what other people out there. I mean, are there any longtime promotions that you follow? Um, I don't know so much down there in in Texas. It seems like. It seems like everybody that's really kind of hopping are are newer companies with newer ideas, like Inspire. Yeah, and, and there's some have gone that have gone a good while, like you know, a good seven or eight years and stuff like that, but not not necessarily like a Chikara or a uh, or a PWG or Ring of Honor like that. That's probably reached like a going on closer to two decades. You know what I mean? Like mm. like that's you know kind of more in the East Coast. I feel kind of well, but. It's been it's been more of a it's been more of a a a culture around the East Coast, you could say. Right. Um, the the distance the distance gaps are kind of nice too. <laughs> too. Like the large the large population of the Northeast is probably is probably very very helpful to to those things kind of kind kind of flourishing, right? So yeah. definitely. So all right, anything else uh, uh, from the week indie wrestling that you want to touch on? I'm not sh- I'm not sure what else. I uh, I know Matt Connor is still working on the article for this week. Um, uh, a- anything else popping up out there? Uh, not, not that I know. Of. I know there's a lot, obviously a lot of indie wrestling happening. I guess this is technically indie wrestling, but I want to uh, technically, but I want to give a, a much love to uh, obviously from the show Chris De Joseph and and guys from the Jonah Graham. Uh, for having their first on the road show, uh, actually tonight as we're recording this, uh, uh, their uh, Austin Warfare event. Uh, uh, I've been following the Twitters and, and all this stuff on social media, and it looks like it was amazing. They they packed that the uh, Austin Music uh, Austin Music Center. I want to say uh, I may have messed up the title of the venue, but whatever. Um, it seems like they had a really great success on the road, and uh, that's really awesome to see that you know a company. You know, we say a lot of times, sometimes with like companies that aren't WWE, is that oh, do they necessarily have that reach? And it seems like they did. 
And mm-hmm. and it seems like there are people that are really excited for Lucha, and, and, and that's always really cool to see. I just want to love Lucha in there, because I guess Lucha is technically an independent, well, you know, I, I, it's hard to say, but yeah. It's a celebration. Guys- listen, listen, it's a celebration of wrestling, and we do talk almost solely WWE when it comes to our main show. So that's, right. I, I, it's okay in, in, in my book. Um, no, I, 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 yeah, I think you're right. And, 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 and look at, uh, uh, I was interested in what, what they would do. Cause Lucha is whatever you're going to see live is not the Lucha that you fell in love with. You know what I mean? I mean, the wrestling in the ring is going to be there. Right. But it's like, mm-hmm. it is, it, it's, it's it, to me, Lucha underground is more than that. You know, it's it's the atmosphere and everything else, and I'd love to see how they do present that in a live atmosphere. Um, I, I, from what it seems, I think they did. A, obviously, like you said, you don't get like backstage movie style promos, but uh, they they had a live band. I know uh, uh, that involved uh, someone getting hit over the head with a guitar from that band. Nice. Um, uh, you know, obviously some of the cool stuff. I know Aerostar dove off a balcony, which is crazy. Um, cool stuff there, uh, and then. I think as much as, you know, yeah, that kind of movie style of Idol Lucha Underground, you can't really recreate, but that kind of underground, like, sort of small venue, kind of close niche vibe, I think is something that they can recreate if they want to do more shows on the road. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly. Well, oh, hey, and a big congratulations to friends of the show, uh, Dylan Bostic and uh, Ray Lynn. Uh, they are mm-hmm. officially engaged in this past week. I think congrat- uh, congratulate uh, uh, Ray Lynn. Uh, in person there on uh, Saturday night at IWC, uh, so uh, so so it's good to see. There's a lot of love is in the air in the Indies <laughs> apparently between this and our Joey Ryan uh, 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 video from a few weeks ago. That's that's uh, uh, going around. Dick Justice is getting married to Missy Hyatt this weekend at um, AIW. <laughs> Well, so it all works. It, it ties together. Hey, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Love is in the air. Amen. Sorg, I'm in like with you. And I like doing the podcast <laughs> with you. you. I just want to make that clear right now. So um, well, that's all I got for this week. So, uh, hey, guys, uh, 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 thanks again to Johnny Swole for joining us. Thanks, Eamon, for bringing another one of your friends from the area uh, in. Uh, so, uh, and, and we're going to see who we're talking to here in the next few weeks. Again, check out the past interviews. We just talked with, of course, Jimmy Corderas of WWE, or the referee. Uh, we, we've got great interviews in there with Chris J- J- Joseph, and even check out the Chris J- Joseph episode of the Wrestling Mayhem show from a couple months back. Um, that's a lot. Of, that was a lot of fun and caused a little bit of controversy, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, a lot of good friends of the show. Uh, check out the back catalog, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and let's know who you want to talk to us to talk to at four one two two zero six WMS zero or Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Amen. He's aiming to please on the twitters. Yes, indeed. I'll also check out Inspire Pro Wrestling, InspireProWrestling.com. That's right. I'm over at uh, all the places, CircuitronMedia.com, but especially in context of this show, IndieWrestling.us. We got single matches and, and all kinds of stuff uh, for you guys to check out. Or sign up for the newsletter. You get a free sh- you get a free wrestling show. You get a free wrestling show, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed by it. It's got a few names that we've mentioned in this show, <laughs> the, <laughs> the ones that are on TV right now. Um, so thanks a lot, so much, everybody. Uh, support some indie wrestling. See you guys. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.